Hello students, welcome to online video tutorial. In this tutorial, I am taking a topic on advanced surveying in civil engineering department. In this session, I am going to cover few topics in module 3 of advanced surveying. So before entering into the module 3, let us know what do you mean by solar system. So this is sun, sun is surrounded by planets. Here lies the earth. Earth has two special features, one is revolution and other one is rotation. Revolution means Earth revolves around the sun through this axis. This is called as revolution and rotation means at Earth rotates along its own axis is called as rotation. The rotation concept is explained in the next slide in a very detailed manner. So the whole picture, what you can see here is called as universe. So if this picture is there in your mind clearly, then you can understand the entire unit very easily. So now module three, that is introduction to field astronomy. So what do you mean by astronomy? Astronomy is a branch of science which deals with celestial objects. See celestial objects means sun, moon, stars, planets, comets and etc are called as celestial objects, space and physical universe as a whole is called as astronomy. So the first concept in the module 3 is astronomical terms. The first astronomical term is celestial sphere. So first let us know what do you mean by sphere? See sphere is a round shaped object. That means we can take an example of round shaped ball can be taken an example for sphere. Okay. Celestial sphere means see in this figure you can see it clearly. See in the center portion this is called as earth. The earth is surrounded by some space that space is called as celestial sphere. So I'll just give you an example. See for example this is a small ball. Assume this is a cricket ball. This cricket ball is surrounded by one volleyball. That means this cricket ball is located at the center that is exactly at the center of the volleyball. Okay. If you take this imagination into this in the center, there is a earth. Earth is covered by some space. Okay. That is called as celestial sphere. So it is an imaginary sphere. Okay, this is an imaginary sphere on which all stars, planets, sun, moon, etc. lie. That means in this celestial sphere, planet lies that is earth or all the planets, then sun, moon, stars. Okay everything lies in this some imaginary sphere that is called as celestial sphere. This is earth. Earth is covered by some space that includes sun, moon, stars and everything. The whole thing is called as celestial sphere. So the second astronomical term is the zenith and nadir. See in this figure you can see the earth. Earth is at the center. The earth is surrounded by celestial sphere. This is celestial sphere. Okay, a person is standing upon the earth that is observer is standing upon the earth like this. Okay, it means he is standing exactly straight upon this thing that is because of gravity. So from this point exactly from the center of this observer, I will just draw a line like this. This line cuts the celestial sphere at this point. And this point is called as zenith with respect to observer. So this is through the upper portion of the earth that is zenith. Nadir means it is through the lower portion of the earth. So I am drawing this line extending this line okay, exactly from the center of this observer as well as center of the earth below. Okay, This point is called as nadir. Zenith is the upper portion. Nadir, nadir is the lower portion. Zenith is the from observer I am just drawing a line. For Nadir 
from exactly from the center of the observer as well as center of the earth the line which passes through the celestial sphere is called as nadir in the definition they have given zenith is a point on the upper portion of the celestial sphere this is the upper portion then marked by plumb line okay you know what do you mean by plumb line plumb line is nothing but a straight line that is dropped for example in the previous see for example if i am doing if i am taking a dumpy level or auto level an example in order to see the center line we are just dropping a plumb line that you people had done in the lab okay so that is what the plumb line plumb line is plumb line is the straight line from the observer here also same thing nadir is a point on the lower portion of the celestial sphere marked by plumb line below the observer so the next astronomical term is great circle see this is the celestial sphere and here lies the earth so i am drawing a circle exactly at the surface of this sphere okay this is called as great circle and these are the small circle the speciality of great circle why it is called as great circle means if i take this center this center is same for this sphere as well as celestial sphere that means the center of the great circle is same as the tough center of the celestial sphere see in this figure you can see it bit clearly see this is the great circle i have the center over here and this is the celestial sphere for this also the center is present here so this is what we call it as great circle all the circles that can be drawn on the surface of the sphere that that has center same as center of sphere that is great circle so the next astronomical term is the celestial horizon so in this figure see here the topmost portion of the earth surface is zenith and the bottom most portion can be called as nadir that we have learnt before okay zenith and nadir so if i am drawing a great circle okay at this portion i am drawing a great circle this great circle can be called as the celestial horizon only when this great circle is exactly perpendicular to this zenith as well as nadir see this is exactly perpendicular to this zenith and nadir so this great circle can be called as celestial horizon i'll just underline over here sphere by the plane which is perpendicular to the zenith and nadir that is the great circle traced on the celestial sphere by the plane which is perpendicular to the zenith and nadir the line which passing through the center of the earth is called as celestial horizon this is a great circle zenith will be at the top and nadir will be at the bottom and this point is passing exactly through the center of the earth through the center of the earth and this great circle is perpendicular to zenith as well as nadir is called as celestial horizon so our next astronomical term is vertical circle so we will have a small revision so this is earth earth is surrounded by celestial sphere earth is surrounded by celestial sphere in case if a person is standing at this point is standing straight because of the gravity if i am drawing a line to the upper portion it is called as zenith the same line if i am extending from the center of the person and the center of the earth this point is called as nadir and i am drawing on great circle if this great circle is perpendicular to the zenith and nadir this great circle is called as horizon so in this figure this is celestial sphere and this is horizon okay so then what is vertical circle vertical circle means in a great in a celestial sphere if a great circle is passing through the point of zenith as well as nadir then it is called as vertical circle for example if this great circle it passes through in case if we are taking these two points in case if it passes to these two points it cannot be called as vertical circle it is just a great circle okay if this great circle passes only through zenith as well as nadir 
then it is called as vertical circle so three things you should not get confused that is one is great circle and other one is horizon and other one is vertical circle. don't get confused with these three things so the next term is terrestrial poles and terrestrial equator so same thing this is earth and this is celestial sphere okay if i am taking this as earth these points is poles okay that is north pole and south pole this po this point is called as equator what i am drawing here this is called as equator so the main function of this poles the axis of this pole is rotation so here i will explain you the rotation concept clearly so for example let me take the sun is here okay the sun rays is like this to the earth that is sun rays emits to the earth the rotation of the earth takes place in this direction through this poles the rotation of the earth takes place so just for an example you take your place is this thing okay at some time 12 am that is morning 12 am at this time if you are standing here you will be directly exposed to the sun the temperature will be very high then due to the rotation of the earth sorry this is 12 pm okay that is afternoon due to the rotation of the earth your position will come here at midnight 12 am okay this is afternoon and this is midnight at this time the sun is not exposed to this area okay this is some area and this is some area and you are standing here at 12 afternoon and you will be exposed to the direct sun and due to the rotation in the night after 12 hours your position will come here and this is night time okay because of this rotation the day and night takes place the rotation acts the rotation takes place by this axis that is north pole and south pole so now the concept is very simple this is north pole south pole and this is the equator celestial sphere if i am drawing the line here this point is called as north celestial sphere simple thing if i am drawing line here south celestial sphere okay celestial equator the total complete thing which is parallel to this equator is called as celestial equator so the next astronomical term is observer's meridian okay so i am just drawing an earth okay north south west and east okay north and south is called as poles okay this is the pole and this is called as equator okay this thing i will link it here so the meridian is a particular point on the circle this is the circle and some particular point this is particular point this particular point passes through zenith as well as nadir of the point as well as through the poles okay this is one point we got this is zenith point and this is nadir point okay in case they are telling this point as through the poles through the poles means poles means north as well as south east west is equator forget about this north south is poles and they are telling zenith and nadir of the point as well as through the poles that means this line is passing through the poles that is c north and south okay this axis is called as meridian so the next very important concept is the latitude and longitude see here in this figure this is a earth globe i am just showing you as a globe so this is pole pole that i can take it as north north sorry south west east this is poles and this is equator okay this is horizontal line and this is vertical line so first latitude latitude means see this thing this line what you are seeing in the horizontal direction this is latitude the line which you are seeing in the vertical direction is called as 
longitude okay so latitude is a angular distance see the angle is given 0 degree 15 degree 30 degree 45 degree so these are the angular distance with respect to this 0 degree if you are taking this point this is 15 degree 30 degree 45 degree okay latitude is an angular distance of any place on the earth's surface of a north or south equator okay equator okay through the equator so again here also you can see the angles okay longitude of a place is an angle between the fixed reference see this is very important fixed repre fixed reference called prime meridian or first meridian so that means see my earth surface is like this this is north south west east if i am drawing a latitude latitude will be parallel fine that is horizontal direction what i have told you Longitude means from fixed reference means this is my fixed reference. Okay. I can draw the longitude like this from the fixed reference. You know what do you mean by meridian? Okay. If I am drawing it from, I am just using these two as a fixed reference. You can see here. At the topmost point, some fixed reference is there. So we can see the curved line here. Okay. From this fixed reference, we can draw the line. So that is what we call it as longitude and this is from the fixed reference angle this angle between a fixed reference. So what is the use of latitude and longitude see here. So this is zero point and this is zero point. So if you are standing in India for example this is mainly to locate the point if you are standing in India I need to locate the point of India. So if I want to locate this point then I can see see here that is 15 degree north and this line is passing somewhere over here yeah 15 degree north and 60 degree east okay 15 degree north and 16 degree east like this we can locate the points somewhere if you are, if i want to locate i can take this thing and i can see the reference okay like this so the next terms are azimuth altitude and co-altitude so for better understanding first i will explain what is altitude see here this is celestial meridian the complete thing okay and this is horizon so the topmost portion is zenith and bottommost portion is you know this is nadir this is called as horizon when this horizon that is when this great circle is perpendicular to the zenith as well as nadir so this thing is perpendicular to these two points so it is called as horizon okay so one observer is standing upon the horizon okay in this horizon one observer is standing and we have star over here it can also be called as celestial or heavenly body okay one star is present over here and one more thing is vertical circle so you came to know celestial meridian horizon Vertical circle you can see here. Vertical circle means it passes to passes through zenith as well as nadir point. Okay, you can see the vertical circle also here, and star is here. So now we will read out the definition, and you can understand it clearly. The altitude of celestial or heavenly body. So this is celestial or heavenly body is the angular distance above the horizon measured on the vertical circle. This is the vertical circle and this is present above the horizon that is heavenly body is the angular distance above the horizon okay above the horizon so this angle from this point to this angle is called as altitude this altitude is measured through the vertical circle yeah only this angle is called as altitude passing through the body So altitude we came to know. Next co-altitude. This is very simple. See here. It, it is a complement of altitude. That means the angular distance of heavenly body from the zenith. Okay. This angle from the zenith. This angle is called as co-altitude. So this is complement of this altitude. That is angular distance of heavenly body from zenith. 
this is the heavenly body this is the zenith angular distance from zenith and heavenly body is called as co altitude so the next concept is azimuth so the azimuth of heavenly body is a angle between the observer meridian and vertical circle so the heavenly body means the star so observer meridian so just compare this figure with here okay this is the observer meridian see this is zenith here is here and zenith is here so zenith to north zenith to north this is observer meridian okay they are telling angle between observer meridian and vertical circle you know this is vertical circle okay the great circle passing through zenith as well as nadir is called as vertical circle so this is my vertical circle and this is my observer meridian so the angle between these two things is called as azimuth so the next term is the declination and co declination so the declination means see this is the earth and this is a celestial sphere north south that is this is poles and you know this is equator declination of a celestial body is a angular distance from the plane of the equator see this is a celestial body that is star and from this earth this point is the point at the equator so this angle is called as declination angle okay so in case what do you mean by declination circle so from this star meridian if i am stretching this circle exactly from here through the meridian so these things what you are seeing these are meridians through this meridian if i am stretching a circle like this then it is called as declination circle so declination means the angle between the equator as well as celestial body okay that is star is called as declination that is declination angle so co declination it means the complement of the declination that is the angular distance from the celestial body or heavenly body from the nearer pole so this angle is called as co declination okay the angular distance from the heavenly body from the nearer pole so my nearer pole is here and this angle is called as co declination same thing what you have see saw in the before so the next very important term is solstices so before that we need to see see i am just drawing a earth over here okay so you know this is the north pole and south pole and west and east that is equator okay so i told you so this is the pole so the actual shape of the earth is not straight that is it is been tilted like this to some angle with respect to the poles this thing you can see here this is a straight line that is this is north south same thing north and south okay see actually this is a straight reference but our earth is not straight it has been tilted the angle of tilting is 23 degree so this is straight this is tilt the angle between these two things is 23.5 degree so i had explained you the rotation concept that rotation takes place by the help of these poles okay now in this case we can see the revolution the earth revolves around the sun the sun is at the center and the earth revolves around the sun and the changes happens at these four stages solstices are the points at which the north and south declination if the sun is maximum okay so the decline declination means the earth is declined to an angle of 23.5 degree it is not straight it is declined so this point is called as winter solstice see in this point you see in the north region this point is not receiving sufficient light from the sun but when you are coming here you can see in the north region this region that is this region is receiving complete sunlight when it is in this position but this regions stops receiving 
sunlight whereas here it receives sunlight vice versa okay so that is the difference between these two positions but whenever it is in this position see the declination or the earth is tilted in this manner so the complete thing receives same amount of light from the sun but the only difference is here in this point it receives there is some fluctuations in the receiving of sunlight so this position is called as vernal equinox so see here the point at which north declination of the sun is maximum is called as summer solstice see here north north declination is maximum okay while the point at which south declination of the sun is maximum is called as winter solstice okay here the south declination is maximum so that is the difference but in this two two position the earth receives complete light only the difference in these two position that is vice versa thing what i have told you so that's all for the session the remaining portion will be covered in the part 2 video so these are the main concepts so if you are thorough with these terms then the remaining part of the module is very very easy okay so thank you for the kind attention meet you people at the next video that is part 2 of module 3 thank you one and all